Hi there, welcome to part two of the video series on uh, the first few weeks of your first job. As I mentioned in the first part, congratulations if you've just landed your first job. Fantastic effort. Um, and let's just jump straight into the holy trinity of love because that's how we learn how to practice love on a daily basis, right, on this channel. So the first one, um, the first element is all about thinking love, right? So what can we... Um, think, you know, when we're on the first few weeks of your first job. So, um, what I'd like to, love to mention on this point is that your attitude is absolutely crucial, okay? Why? Because if it's your first job, other people, other your colleagues at your workplace are unlikely to have any kinds of expectations as to your skills and competencies, you know, they do not expect you to be a specialist or an expert at whatever it is that you chose to do for your job, right? They know you're a beginner, they know you're right at that, you know, first step. So, what matters most is your attitude. How willing are you to actually carry out your role to your best ability in the circumstances that you are in and with the knowledge and the skills that you do currently possess as a result of, you know, your life experience up to this point. So thinking is actually um, very important because that reveals what your attitude is towards your work, right? So if you have positive thoughts, if you are inspired, you are um, just, you know, ready to grab the bull by the horns and run with it, excellent. And just remember your power of thought during that process to bring out that sensations of the attitude and the feelings of, you know, wanting to be the best self that you can be is, is crucial. Have that yes I can, I can do attitude because that will get you into a lot more, it will create more opportunities for you in the position that you find yourself and if other colleagues, you know, your managers, your bosses or just, you know, other team members see you as the can-do person because you keep saying, you know, more yeses to things, they will find you useful and helpful and having you know, a very good appreciation of what it is that you do and who you are as an individual and as a result they will actually give you more work, more opportunities to develop more learning and guess what, ultimately all that accumulative effect of experiences and you're doing and getting to know more people is what gets you your next um, role, your next promotion, your next opportunity, whatever that might be. Um, so yes, there's a lot in terms of the thinking that you can do in order to help yourself during those first few weeks, you know, if you, if you start with a can-do attitude right from the beginning. Um, now, have a go and figure something out. Um, so obviously you're going to be in a new place, new environment, new people. There's going to be a lot of that unknowns. But the best thing you can do is just have a go at something. And so by thinking about it first, and figuring, you know, what my next best step is, is what something you can realistically do, right? What is my next best thing? And you, obviously that happens in the mind. You figure some things out or you consider options of, you know, if you were given a particular task and you don't know exactly how to complete it, depending on the nature of the task, well, you can consider the best options and you go ahead and then execute or if you're feeling a little bit of uncertainty or confusion or you just need a little bit more of guidance as to look out of this option ABC as to the how I can complete a particular task. And you might go to your supervisor, your manager or your colleague and actually chat to them and be like, hey, I know you've given me um, this particular task to complete, you know, you've delegated it to me. I have thought about it. Um, there's, you know, this way I can do it, ABC. Um, which one do you think out of all these options is the best? You know, I would appreciate your guidance. So have a go at figuring some things first before you seek the guidance, all right? Because why, if you go straight from being given a task, you know, you're, you're asked to do something, and then immediately after you go to the person and be like, oh yeah, so how do you go about doing that? Without having even thought about the how yourself to try and figure it out. Well, the person who has delegated the task to you, either two options there, right? Either they would be willing to show you right from the get-go, in which case they probably um, would have already shown you how to do it 
when they were delegating the task to you for the first time, right? So they might be like, oh, right, okay, thanks for pulling me up on that. I actually forgot to show you how to do it. Or the other option is, they, that's, it's a more negative one, is that they will see that you haven't even bothered to take the time to figure something out by yourself. And it's it takes me, my, you know, the delegator, a much longer period of time to actually um, explain something to you than to do it themselves. So they might be, next time, they might just rather do the job themselves than go out and seek your guidance or ask you to do it. And now the bad thing for you is that if more of that happens, if less people ask for your help, your role might no longer be needed and you might actually be at risk of losing your job, okay? So hey, so going back to the first bit, which I was talking about, that yes, can do attitude is very important. You know, the ability for people to actually observe you and see you as an individual that is helpful, that is useful, that wants to help, that is trying to figure things out, that is wanting to actually be useful um, and apply themselves in, you know, whatever situation they find themselves in. And, you know, so the gratitude, you know, we, one of the universal laws we talked about in part one is all about the power of gratitude and this, you know, soulful appreciation card that um, we discussed in a little bit more detail. Um, and I read the message out from the guidebook in part one. So when we about thinking like, right, so, um, you know, just, just thoughts about your first job, you know, being appreciative for the fact that you were given the opportunity to actually do a particular job which will then enable you to gain those new experiences and money so if you recall you know one of the messages from the guidebook was that people are quick to appreciate the material wealth aka income you know dollars that are going to be coming through as a result of arising a job um, and just as quick to dismiss the fleeting unassuming moments of joy um, but it's vitally important not to miss these golden opportunities. So it's everything else that actually comes with the job. So that is meeting new people, learning customer service, uh, learning how to do a particular task or tasks together, you know, making up a particular role or job, working with money, you know, calculating, um, being trustworthy, you know, developing those sort of skills and um, also, you know, like a ultimately a character reference for who you are as an individual because ultimately if you have a goal of moving on to other jobs or roles in your future you will need some kind of um, reference from your boss from your manager or whatnot it might be and so all these you have the fact that you got your first job gives you the opportunity to start on that journey to actually start developing those um, character references because of the way you are and who you deal with and how you go about doing that and um, the last thing I want to mention is, is actually um, if you are struggling um, and if you, if you find your first job really challenging, you know, your first few weeks you might not be getting along with people or you might be, you know, you're trying to find your feet but it's not quite going to plan, you know, some things are not going as expected as possible still feel the deep appreciation for the fact that you've got the opportunity there must be a reason for it but i suggest praying okay a prayer is kind of an act of love in my life anyway so pray to whoever it is that you believe in or address with your thoughts whoever it is that you believe in whether it's you know your ancestors and departed you know like individuals in your family or friends and have crossed into the spirit world and you know mother earth um, angels, archangels, whoever it is that you believe in, just ask for some physical eye signs, some physical evidence, some information, some advice that might come through in order to help you with the particular you know, challenging situation that you have found yourself in, in your first job. That might be the way to go. So what about speaking love? So the second element of our holy trinity of love is all about speaking love. Well, the first thing you can do, obviously, as the newbie on the block in a particular workplace is to actually introduce yourself, right? So you can go about yeah, and figure out, you know, new faces, new faces you've never seen before, people. Introduce yourself. Tell them who you are, what your name is, you know, the fact that you're new and ask them what they are, who they are, what do they do, you know, what's their relevance, you know, ask them a few things as you would talking to like a new friend. 
why not? Um, ask what you can do to help, okay? So um, going back to that can-do attitude and the fact that you're a yes-I-can person, if you, if, if you are, you will be asking people how can you help them? Is there anything you can do in order to assist them to make their life easier, right? Ultimately, you're all a team, yeah? And you're all a team doing work together for the benefit of your customers, clients, whoever that might be. Don't forget to ask also to show you how, okay? So if something is very challenging or you're asked to do something that is completely, you know, uh, something that you're not confident about doing, don't forget to just approach somebody, tap them on the shoulder, say, excuse me, such and such, can you please show me how to do X, Y, Z, you know, I'm really struggling here or finding challenging, I've never done this before, so I would appreciate your help and assistance, please. If something is taking you um, way too long to complete, it's something that I've observed in my life, if I'm doing a particular task and I've just been at it for, for like an unreasonable period of time, and then I had this trigger, I always had my trigger in the head, like I'm probably doing it wrong. Uh, there is most likely an easier way of going about, you know, this particular task that I'm undertaking. So um, if you are, if you find yourself in that situation where you're like, right, I think I have exhausted everything that I could have, you know, thought about or done and it's just kind of not working out, well, Perhaps it's time to go and tip somebody on the shoulder and just speak to somebody about that and just to be like, look, I'm, I've tried this, I've tried that, you know, could you please show me how to go about doing that or is there an easier way, you know, let's chat about it, let's have a conversation. And the most important thing is, you know, part of that can-do attitude and the, the attitude is very important, it's being proactive, right? As in you're the initiator, you're the instigator, you're the first person to go and actually Talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly. You know, the good, you're positive, you're introducing yourself, you're bringing that enthusiasm, that um, energy, that lovely energy that people have when they start something new, but also the good, the bad, and the ugly. You know, the other side of it, if they are struggling, if there are challenges, if there are difficulties, you're the first person to kind of not just sit there in the back of the office and hope, you know, somebody comes and asks you if you need help you're the first person that actually gets up, stands up, and goes seeks out the right person who might be able to help you. And if that person isn't able to give you the assistance directly, they may know of another who will, okay? And so that's how it works. And then, <clears throat> so the speaking part, right? So something that comes to mind is obviously customer and client service. Uh, whatever your first job is, just remember, you've always got your own clients or your own customers. Why? Because there are internal clients and external clients. What I mean by that is external clients are the clients or the customers of the business, right? So just as an example, if you're in food service or you're waiter and waitress, your customers, right, are the people who come, the patrons, into your restaurant, cafe, bar, whatever it might be, and order food, order drinks. So yes, they are the customers of the whole business and as a united team, um, you offer that service to those kinds of customers, right? The internal clients of the customers are actually the people you work with. And the reason they're also your clients or your customers because you are actually selling yourself, who you are as like as an individual, what you're like as a person, as a team member to those individuals. And they deserve to be treated with the same politeness, respect, you know, um, dialogue, conversations, everything as you would of the, the business, um, the clients or the customers of the business in exactly the same manner. Because the truth is, and that's something, it's a good habit to get into, um, just not distinguishing that all of a sudden I can be completely slack on the, you know, with my team and I'm going to become this formal, super awesome person, you know, the most professional individual when I'm facing the customers and the outside customers because the truth is, Sometimes it's very hard to keep up those two different, you know, personas. So the best thing you can do is actually you be yourself all the time and you treat your internal clients exactly the same manner as your external clients. And so you get some really good excellence habits right from the get-go and you practice those on a daily basis with your internal and external clients. Um, you know, 
have um, my go-to is always a welcoming smile, you know, being positive, showing that you are um, welcome to a conversation with whoever. You've got a smile on your face. And why? Why do you go about doing that? Well, there's two reasons, you know, with, with the internal and external clients. You know, why are you going to be training the most in the same way? And I, you know, I've given you the reasons why. But most importantly is that, you know, welcoming smile and politeness to your external customers will actually make them come back. Right, the reason why the customers are in um, is because they're obviously paying for the good or the service that the business provides. The you know the exchange of value is obviously the money, whatever they're paying for it, or any other kind of consideration, whatever that might be. And ultimately, that turns into your income. The fact that you've got a job is because there are external customers that are coming in, right? And so that way, you know, those customers and their money literally translates into the fact that you've got a job. And if we recall, we've got to have soulful appreciation for the fact that we've even got a job, right? So there's there's something to ponder about, you know, some good food for thought. Um, and the power of thank you is, you know, it's very much related to the soulful appreciation um, with that, with your internal customers or clients, are you your work colleagues, your team members? Thank you. You know, do not forget to show your thanks for whatever it is that individual has helped you with. Be those small things like showing you where the water cooler is or the bathrooms are, to assisting you know with a particular task or giving you some information. Likewise, to the external customers, right? For the fact that they've come in, to the fact that they made the order, to the fact that they've enjoyed, um, you know, their service or the good, you know, in food service, or maybe their meal, whatever it might be, you thank people for even being in the presence of your business. One way or another, you just thank them for coming. Thank you for being there. And um, if we talk about the third element, oh, I'm running out of time. Um, if we talk about the third element of the Holy Trinity of Love, which is doing love, right? So, have a go. Have a go at your job, whatever it may be. Do your best in the circumstances that you're in. Remember, people know you're not like an expert or a specialist. You're at your first job. They appreciate that you're just at beginner level, right? Level one. But have a go. Do your best in the circumstances. Now, something else you can do is read the policy documents that the business provides you with, any policies, any processes, any systems that they have in place. If you were not given that policy document, ask your immediate supervisor, boss, or whoever it is that you are on a daily basis with, you're working, to see if there are any policy documents out there that you could have a read through, okay? And that's how always helpful. Um, familiarize yourself with the tools of trade and equipment, whatever your business might be into, right? Um, whether if, if you're a tradesperson, obviously there's going to be a lot of tools. If you're working with a lot of systems and with a lot of technology involved, there's a ton of equipment that you have to familiarize yourself with and understand the ins and the outs of how it works, including the software behind it, you know? Um, at the moment, a lot of students may be familiar with a particular system, you know, that they do at school, at university, but then you come to a workplace and they use a completely way of different, um, different, different tools, different software, different apps, different way of doing things. And that takes time, right, to learn what works and what does the relevant team do, what does the relevant organization, and how do they go about doing that. You know, r related to familiarizing yourself with the tools of trade and equipment is to actually learn your surroundings, learn your environment. Where is your place of work? Is it a building? Is it multiple buildings? Um, what's nearby? What's next to it? Where things are at? Where the different rooms are and um, which departments or which teams do what in which particular locations and why? You know, just getting that familiarity with the physical location must be something you can do. Um, figure out if there's a map somewhere, take a copy of that map, um, if you will, and kind of study it. Um, is there anything you can do to practice at home, you know, is a good one. So, um, yes, you know, investing um, your time outside of typical work hours will actually benefit you a lot into learning and getting up to speed with your job the sooner the better and it goes a lot into showing your can-do attitude and that you know yes you're fantastic at what you do and that you're a go-getter and that you will learn fast as well 
spending some time or wasting your time at home, you know, during your leisure time outside of your work hours, into getting to know things like your environment. So if you figured out that there's a map to show where things are at, take that map home, you know, if you're able to, you know, from confidentiality perspective, just be mindful of that. But if you can, study it at home, figure out where things are at. Um, what else you can do at home? So reflecting on, oh, write some notes down, you know, so the particular processes that you got familiar with or you just learned something for the first time. If you learn how to do a task for the first time, um, jot that down. If, if you had the time to do that at work, great. But if you didn't, jot down a few things on a piece of paper just to make sure that next time you go and complete that task again you already have um, you know a memory or a collection of that process or you might actually have the written notes literally in front of you with instructions written by yourself as to how you can go about doing that why so that you don't have to go and um, ask your managers or bosses or other people for help doing exactly the same task that they have already shown you before because guess what people don't want to be wasting time um, teaching you how to do the same thing over and over and over again right they expect you that if they have shown you something once that you will learn it literally so if that's not you the best way you can help yourself is to write it down right write the process down and then study it memorize it do whatever it is that you have to do and um, what else you can do at home? So practice in front of a mirror or video camera, your customer service. You might not know how you come across, right? Because we can't actually see ourselves, um, you know, unless you have a mirror or video camera to actually observe um, your face, um, your gestures, you know, facial gestures, hand gestures, your body language, all that stuff. Um, so I just suggest, you know, practice in front of a mirror, say some things out loud, you know, do you have an introduction um, if a customer, an external customer comes in for the first time, you know, what's your go-to? What are you going to say? What are the first things that are going to come out of your mouth? Likewise, if you work with a phone, you know, or you enter meetings or you have phone conversations, what is that first couple of things that you say? Practice that at home and get into a habit of doing that. And um, the next time you come to your workplace, you realize it comes in so much more naturally if you have done the practice, if you've, if you've done the homework effectively to make your own first job feel better. Um, an example I can give you is um, when I started at KFC, and this was ages ago, um, something I did was to actually download um, the menu of, that was available at the relevant time um, for at, at KFC, you know, it was accessible online. I downloaded the menu and I literally studied all of the food items that were offered just to make sure that next time an external customer came in and ordered a particular meal, bundle, um, whatever that might be, I don't stand there like, you know, a silly person not knowing the fact that my the business I'm representing actually offers that. Well, I would done the homework, you study the menu at home, and then you come back better the next time. Um, another thing I used to do, definitely helped me was like the cash register, because part of my job obviously involved taking orders and working with money and submitting the, um, the order through the system, and it was a very old system, so no display as you have them now. Um, it was extremely, extremely old system where you literally had um, buttons um, for individual items and there was a way that if, if a customer ordered like a combo, uh, some special burger combo whatever that might be, you have buttons for that and then you select the particular items that they have asked for or decided to swap, lots and lots of buttons. So I literally recreated that on a piece of paper so I, I may have taken photos of it, I can't recall, or I may have just written it set down. I don't remember exactly the how, but I remember recreating whatever I saw, the way those buttons were on the cash register. I recreated that at home on a piece of paper, and I wrote it all out, and I memorized it. So why the next time a customer would come in, I'm more efficient, I'm more effective, I'm speedy, I know where things are at. I can just punch them in and make the surface. So the surface much better, I look more competent, um, to the customer and I am saving them time, I know what I'm doing and the whole experience for the customer is so much better, right? So that's just something that comes up is that you can actually invest your time at home during this first few weeks or first few months in order to get yourself better and do your job better. 
um, consider <clears throat> what your strengths are and how those can benefit your workplace, workplace and your new colleagues. So a few examples I can give here is there are a multitude of ways you can improve your workplace already just given what you know and your skills and experience and life experience up to that point in time. If you are into baking or you have somebody in the family who could bake, you know, bringing some special cake or muffins or bread or cupcakes, whatever that might be, to your workplace uh, or might be helpful, right, for the team to enjoy. Simply to say, hey, here's something, you know, be that biscuits, chocolates, whatever that might be, okay? It will put a smile on people's faces, all right, just to show that you've, you've taken the time to make something or to think of people and make their situation and their time at work better. Um, you might be inspired to even create a bit of a baking roaster and the work, your team members might be in on it. They haven't thought about that before or they just didn't get into the habit of organizing a baking roster so that on a particular day, say Monday morning or Friday, whatever it might be, somebody brings something for the benefit of everybody, right? So you bring something once and then you take the benefit of the goodies, you know, for the weeks, excuse me, for the weeks to come. <clears throat> Likewise, um, a tidying roster. You know, if you're in the habit of, um, it's necessary to tidy your workplaces, whatever that might be, cleaning, tidying, um, or just organizing, there might be a roster for that, and, you know, unless it's somebody's job to do that, you know, um, but if there are things that no one's taking care of, you know, a roster might be helpful so that those elements are taken care of, because guess what, it improves everybody's energy, it improves everybody's mood to be working in an environment that is um, spotless, organized, clean, no clutter, things like that. Just a few examples, but you know yourself better. You know what your strengths are, what your interests are, what your preferences are. Apply those and make everybody's life just a wee bit better and people will remember that, people will recall that. And remember to review the people who have been most useful and helpful to you. You know, that's something that you can step back and just kind of reflect on your first few weeks, months, whatever that might be. And just who made your experience that little bit better during those times. And don't forget, you know, our key word or key phrase, soulful appreciation. Is there any meaningful way you can show that individual or that group of people gratitude for them? Here's a tip what we talk about, holy trinity of love. Think love, pray for them, send them best wishes. Speak love, go and say thanks. Say thank you for that time when you X, Y, Z, fill in the gap, whatever that might be, whatever they helped you with. Do love, show them gratitude, show them love by making their life easier in one way or another. Get them a block of chocolate, you know, whatever that might be, take them out for a coffee, you know. That's just as a thanks, as a way of thanking them for what they did to you to make your life better during that first phase. On that note, we've gone through the speaking love, sorry, thinking love, speaking love, and doing love, right? Lots of practical tips there for you to take away for your first few weeks on your first job. Let's jump into part three, some concluding remarks, departing thoughts, and any more messages or some messages from angels and archangels and spirits, and I'm sure there'll be plenty. See you shortly.